Bonjour tout le monde and welcome to Mises the Fox. For this video I am bringing you a get ready with me while I rant. <laughs> while I discuss um, a bringing back of a series that I had intended to start about two years ago and all the things on my mind and just I want to just rant amongst my people and I asked you guys on Instagram what style you want whether you want me to just talk to you on camera whether you want a little more of a get ready with me style and if you wanted a get ready with me style what did you want to see did you want to see the makeup portion or the hair portion the makeup portion people won out obviously because my hair is done if you do want to see how I did my hair which is with a flat iron to get um, some retro glam old Hollywood glam curls that will be on my IGTV on Instagram so make sure you're following me there for all that good stuff and so today I'm going to be doing a kind of gothy glam look I know you're all just totally shocked. You never expected it from me. I'm doing this makeup to do like a little bit of a like uh anti fat phobic slash jokingly uh glorification of obesity little shoot that I <laughs> I have cooked up. So make sure you're definitely following me on Instagram for that one. So but you guys will see that makeup come to life in front of you. I will kind of try and tell you what I'm using while I'm using it but I'm not going to be like a step this through guide. It's kind of just a watch and see while I get everything off my mind. Let's just get going. <laughs> I am prone to ranting before I even get to doing everything. So everything I will be using will be in the description box down below if I ever get to mention it on camera. Um, let me try and not start off by not mentioning things. So going in with the Rose Deep Hydration Face Cream from Fresh. So as I said two years ago I had decided to start a body positivity series because this channel was never meant to be just a makeup and beauty channel. I don't mean just because that is obviously a hell of a lot of work as it is. I am just too much of an opinionated person to not include everything else about my life. Um, I don't talk about it too much on stuff or enough on stuff, but I'm a very um, politically active person. I come from a long line of <laughs> politically active people, from people who um, rebelled against the Tsar in Russia, to people who were part of the civil rights movement in the South, to people who are on the forefront of gay rights in the Bay Area. I mean, I just, I do not come from a quiet, passive family. And one of the ways I feel like my activism could be used is obviously in the plus size community. So I always meant to be political and talk about things and get under people's skin and challenge people's perspective on things. I meant to do that starting during that two years ago. Um, I did my like fat on the internet of what at the beginning of my YouTube and Instagramness life was like for me. Then my cat passed really awfully and I fell into depression and anxiety and PTSD and all that fun stuff which Honestly, I'm still just not quite ready to talk about on camera yet. I hope to get there because I think it's really important, but I'm just still not there without crying. No, no one needs a video of me just crying on the internet. I think I already have several of those. <sighs> okay, calm. <it. laughs> so I meant to start that series and then life happened and I made very few videos in 2018. I did make the video with my husband where we had the kind of like the couples talk, which is kind of like a plus size talk of like being two plus size people, but not exactly how I meant um, all my videos to go. And so it is time, did I just put the, no, I put the right here. Oh my gosh, you guys, I cannot, <laughs> I can't talk and I'm trying to do this. It's harder than I thought it would be. So revamping that series, I want to talk about things. I want to talk about um, the crap that it is being a fat woman on the internet and all its multifacets. I want to talk about the creepy dudes that crawl in our DMs and say the most heinous crap to us. I want to talk about the just the, the microaggressions of daily life that like thinner people just never think about. Where you want to feel normal and what society makes you feel is abnormal. You want, you want to just have someone who gets it and a lot of ways I do get some of it, but there are also ways where I, I don't. I do have privileges and those need to be discussed as well. Um, I want to talk about what body positivity actually is to me. It means different things to different people. It started out as 
something much different than it's become and whether or not what it's become is entirely good and entirely bad. So I do think that those are like really necessary to talk about. I think a lot of people are getting talked over. Um, other people are taking up spaces and spotlights that were not exactly meant for them. So I, I think all of this needs to be talked about. It's not all going to be comfortable. It's not all going to be nice and pretty. It might make people mad. It might make some people feel seen. And you know, that's just what it is. You can't, we can't, we're having a lot of discussions that feel like there's a lot of coddling going on. Um, where I think our political discourse right now is talking about that. Do you like dismantle the systems or do you just like slowly push at the systems? And I'll tell you right now, I'm a dismantler. I am a rage against the machine type. I am not someone who slowly chips away. I'm a lot of dynamite because I don't think a lot of the systems we have in place um, in society are just beneficial to as many people as it needs to be. So I kind of just want to start the series anew with the things I've learned and just being a little more unflinching in it all. A little less point of punches. Um, I do definitely want to have like a better, when I talk about, about the whole body positivity moment, I kind of want to do, satisfy those of you on the direct to camera and do more of like a video essay type scenario and have my history. Um, my bachelor's degree is in history, so I'd like to bring that kind of perspective to everything. I don't like to just talk about my feelings. I really like to have the facts to back it up, but um... I think for like today I'd like to just lightly talk about just why I think things are coming to a head and um, things that might get rehashed in other videos but so this is just kind of like the trailer for it all. Lately I've just been getting a lot more weird crap coming my way, a lot of other people's weird, weird ass feelings honestly trying to influence my life and I'm not really fond of it, don't like it, and I think the only way that we can change any of it is to get more vocal about it. If, you know, we just let things result as like, oh, you know, an Instagram story here, uh, a not seen post there, it's, it's nice, it gets it off my chest, I feel like I'm not suffering alone in it anymore, but it's not making change. And let's be honest, a lot of this is going to tie into like toxic masculinity and the patriarchy and that is going to be a long fight. It's not going to be something we fix in a day. But I do think a lot of it's, you know, with the Me Too movement, I do think we just need to be more vocal about like the crap we're just not going to take from gross men on the internet. Um, we need to just shame them back into their holes so that they just don't. I'm honestly really for racists and bigots and white nationalists and all those kinds of things, all those people feeling shamed that they need to hide because I think a lot of us in marginalized communities have felt we needed to hide instead and the time for that is, is long gone. So I'm definitely for public shaming of um, the garbage of humanity so that they don't feel like they can come out and uh, play in their nastiness anymore. Honestly, I'm just real done with uh, what people think they can just say to people about their bodies, about what they want to do to people's bodies. All that I think is just, I'm over it. I'm done with it. I think there's so many women on the internet when we get crap from people that a lot of us like, we text our friends about it and then maybe we share our stories but the amount of times that you can tell people that like someone was gross and disgusting to you in your comments or your DMs and the amount of people that say to you, you're just bragging about people hitting on you. And it's just like, excuse me? Is this what you want? Is this the kind of comments you want in your life? Do you want people projecting their gross fetishizations and fantasies on your person? That That's the kind of like thing you're jealous of or think that we want to make other people jealous with? Like that's not it. This is not, you know, your longtime crush sliding into your DMs and then and hooting and hollering about it. This is gross like verbal assault or textual assault on my person that I'm trying to call out this behavior as friggin' disgusting, and then people go just like, yes, we get it. It's like, 
that's not, that's not how this works. So I think there just needs to be a change of the discourse. I think we need to call out the toxic behavior and like the toxic toxicity amongst females to not believe other females or just have these weird assessments of what what we're doing with these things. It all just needs to stop. And I definitely think the way to do that is to bring it all into, bring it all in the light. You know, stuff can't hide in the light. It's not gonna be pretty and not everyone's gonna like it. But I'm just really tired of a lack of sisterhood and I think, <sighs> Uh, I guess that's like where I get have issues with the body positivity community. I feel like a lot of the plus size people who are prospering are just um, plus size versions of the people who have always like prospered in media and that really needs to change. And then the people who have always prospered in media are then taking the work of the body positivity movement and then putting it to them and it's just like, oh okay, so we're just, y'all you, you just gonna feed each other. You're all just gonna, okay, cool, that's great. Awesome. So many things are changing. I'm not down about feeling like nothing is changing, but it's not it's not happening fast enough, guys. I'm just it's not because like I said, other people are taking it back. And I don't think that the body positivity is only movement is only for fat people, but I think it primarily belongs to fat people. I do understand that there are issues in with thinner bodies where you're not thin enough or people don't want you to have human skin that has qualities and I get that and I respect that but at the end of the day no one is yelling at you as you walk down the street because they assume you have cellulite no one is potentially killing you um, at the doctor because they're not listening to your concerns about your body because all they can be concerned with is your body fat percentage that is just not happening to people under a size 10. It's just not. So I do respect and appreciate what those type of bloggers are doing for people who are smaller sized, who need that, people with ED recovery, who are very susceptible to all the gross sides of fitness bloggers and health bloggers and all that stuff. So I don't think their work isn't important. It's just not what the body positivity movement was made for. And it's overshadowing the radical fat feminists <laughs> that started this whole thing. It was, um, again, I will go into this in greater detail with historical accuracy um, in the video about what is body positivity. We think that like fat acceptance, the fat positivity movement is so recent. We really do. And it started in the 60s. People who were yelling for fat liberation in the 60s. Our bodies are not this modern creation. I, ugh. if you need to feel like you are not some modern abnormality. <laughs> We're done with the little thing because it's slipping inside and I can't handle that anymore. As I was trying to say before everything popped off my head, um, if you need to feel like your body is not some weird modern creation because of blah 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 blah, please follow historical fat people. It's a, an account that has historical images of fat people. that shows you that, you that your body is nothing new. It is not unnatural. If fat people have always existed. We always will exist. And it just really helps because I think so many of us hear like the obesity epidemic, the obesity, and it's just, it's just constantly shoved at us like we are a crisis to be solved. But you in general are not a problem to solve. That is not your existence. That is not the point of your existence to fix things, to make things pleasurable for other people, to appeal to anyone's society, societally created standards of anything. I, I think a lot of us need that reminder, which is, again, why I'm getting ready to do a glorification of obesity because um, I will tell the story here because it's probably hard to put an Instagram caption. The other day, I was at the grocery store buying my groceries for the week as a human does. And I had uh, two six packs of Diet Dr. Pepper in my cart. Like, of bottles. Okay. I know, you're just like, congratulations. And this very tiny um, Berkeley, like, upper middle class hippie type woman decided to comment as I was putting things onto the conveyor belt be like, wow, someone really likes that soda. It stopped me and I, it doesn't happen too much. I don't really get many people just commenting about weird, like people don't comment to me in the grocery store about anything usually. I don't usually comment anything to the grocery store people either unless they ask me where something is. And so I just got taken aback and you know, as a fat person, my 
first instinct, of course, was to say like, oh, you know, yeah, this is a treat. It's not a fucking treat. I have it every week. It's like, I, I do. If you need to know why that's okay, please follow this doctor from England about why so many foods that we say are not okay are actually just fine. They're fine. They're fine. Don't, like, don't drink Dr. Pepper 24-7 round the clock. Yeah, obviously. But you can have it for lunch. It won't kill you. It's not gonna kill you. So it just, you know, it made me want to be like, it made me want to qualify why I had them. Um, I wanted to be like, well, there's two of us, so it's like two people's worth. I'm 30 years old. I don't have to justify my purchases to anybody. Like, not even my husband. I don't care what he thinks of what I'm eating. I just don't. That's... That's just how my relationship is. I don't care. Sorry, I'm ranting and getting frothy. <laughs> but I wanted to. I wanted to tell her, like, well, at least it's diet. Um, you know, it's a sometimes food, which is also friggin' nonsense. You know, I wanted to be like, oh, by the way, you know, I drink several of these a day. Like, I don't, it's just so gross that our instincts are to tell people why what we're doing as grown adults is acceptable. It really threw me for a loop. I wasn't expecting it. Um, I kind of stumbled and was kind of like, well, they only sell in a six pack and I'm buying for two people and if I want to cover, you know, the five days of the work week, then I need two packs. I think that's what I ended up saying. This is why, like, fat people are so afraid to just exist, to just do things. And I don't think that straight-sized people can fathom that. What it is to have to go into certain situations and like mentally prepare yourself for people to verbally control you, to, to try to dominate you, to ridicule you. It just blows my mind how much people don't, don't want to think about the experiences of others. So I am uh, putting on some Dr. Pepper themed eyeshadow. Go uh, pose all sexy with some Dr. Pepper because um, I really don't want to be thinking about that woman's comments anymore <sighs> because I refuse to let this woman affect my relationship with food. That's not a power I'm willing to give a stranger. I'm just not, and I've already given her enough power, so I'm taking it back, and we're going to say no more to that. <laughs> you know, some people will like to tout the um, treat others like you would want to be treated, and I think there are people who have such ingrained fat phobia that they feel like well, if I looked a displeasing way to society, I would want to be <sighs> heckled and um, shamed and harassed into changing into a more pleasing shape. I think that's what some people actually think. That if that was me, I'd want you to bother me and bother me until I have a damaged relationship with food. <laughs> uh, until I have a damaged relationship with existing in public. And I'm, I'm not about that. People think they know what's best for complete strangers <laughs> and so I'm, I'm, I'm prepared for it and but I'm, I'm gonna I'm, I insist on creating a dialogue that's fine I can take it nowadays I probably when I was younger could not have handled it if strangers on the internet thought I was ugly or if they thought I was fat even though I've been fat since I was 10 but if they like actually called me fat it would it would hurt and it, it just doesn't hurt anymore um, I think the words don't hurt the fact that like people call me fat doesn't hurt it, it doesn't <laughs> sorry trolls it does not hurt to call me fat because I have taken that back I get it I'm plus size no freaking shit I've been bullied and harassed for that since I was in fifth grade so I get it not everyone in the world likes what my body looks like and that's fine um, my body is not here for anyone but myself. And I really mean that your body's not here for your spouse, your partner, your whatever. Your body is here for you. It's to here to get you through life. So you have to make, you know, you have to deal with yourself every day. And, um, you don't have to deal with strangers on the internet every day. They don't know you. They don't know your life. They don't know anything. They just know that they're feeling some type of way. And their feelings about goodness knows what. Oftentimes that people who are, you know, yelling at you on the internet, you can't see what they look like. They have shut down profiles or some joke thing and half the time it's just about making a, a person feel bad. Um, it's just someone was taught that their opinion is the most important opinion in the universe and so they're going to tell everybody what their opinion is. Um, sometimes it's actually other fat people 
who want to just project the negativity that they've been given. I mean, like, why are you confident and happy with yourself when I'm not confident and happy with myself? How dare you let me try and make you feel bad? And um, I will say the way that, like, nasty people on the internet hurt is the fact that there was someone who took time out of their day to attack you. Not what they say. Like, someone can call me ugly, someone can call me fat, they can call me a waste of space, they can call me dumb, they can call me anything, and it won't hurt me what they say, because I know who I am. Um, I know I'm fat, <laughs> it doesn't bother me. Um, I find myself to be beautiful, and that's all that matters. I really, beauty is so subjective. You see couples out there and you think, I wouldn't date that person, but I'm so happy that someone is. I'm so happy that those two people are in love and that there is positivity. Those are two humans that are happy. And that is all that matters to me. I don't really care whether or not I would want to date someone, whether I don't need everyone in the world to be to my physical specifications of what I find attractive. That's just unrealistic and stupid. I just need people not to want to hurt people, if that makes sense. Like, I have never left a nasty, mean comment in my life. You know how they say, like, all those celebrities who get in trouble for racist stuff or homophobic stuff or just nastiness? I've never been that person. I've never put nastiness out into the world, into the internet like that. I've never looked at someone and been like, you're ugly, you're fat, you're hideous, you're this, you're that. I've never used a slur like that in my life because that's just not how I was raised or how I think, honestly. It doesn't matter how I was raised, I just don't think that way. I don't think, there's a random person, let me hurt them. And I understand that there are people who are like that and they haven't had the right upbringing or they, you know, they've been hurt and they don't know what to do with it. I get that. But I still don't understand projecting it onto people. And it, so it always amazes me. I find them to be a weird psychological study. And I guess I do have that question of who hurt you? What did someone do to you that made you this person now instead of um, a caring person, instead of a loving person? Like, what the hell did someone do to you? Um, and like, it's really not my problem. Uh, so I don't dwell on it longer than probably about 15, 20 minutes after someone is nasty on the internet. <laughs>
Oh my gosh, it's driving me crazy. I'm sorry if you guys can hear it, but it is driving me mad. So I can't entirely remember where I was when everything fell apart yesterday. Um, so hopefully I can edit it so that what I'm about to say merges with it. The other thing about body positivity that we talk, and I, I, I use this hashtag myself, and I think it's important to talk about what I mean when I use certain hashtags. Um, I use the F your beauty standards hashtag because I think it's really important in probably different ways than some people think. There was once a like, or he's, I think he's still out there, this kind of like shock jockey YouTube radio host type guy who was very angered by the F your beauty standards movement because you know he's a toxic masculine dude so of course he was. And he didn't like it because he felt that you know, how dare you say screw what you find beautiful? And uh, that's kind of the point and kind of not the point. Um, he's like, how dare you tell me I have to find fat people attractive? And it's like, no one said, that's not what F, well, to me, that's not what F your beauty standards is. F your beauty standards to me is not you have to find every fat person attractive. I don't believe you have to find everyone of any, like every human attractive. That's just ridiculous. What it means is I don't care what your beauty standards are. Um, I'm not going to live my life geared around what people find attractive, what people find flattering. Um, long time watchers know how much I hate the freaking word flattering. I don't believe in the word flattering. I believe in wearing whatever the hell you want, whether anyone else on this planet besides you likes it. I, I really do. You can dress However, um, I honestly believe so deeply in the dignity of human beings that I don't care what you look like and I don't care what you wear, that it's just, it's really the least important part of you. Um, I think it is packaging and your self-expression for sure. Um, I think it's how we manifest control in our lives and it's hard to get your whole personality out through just talking, I think sometimes you wanna you wanna show it, you wanna wear it, and that's fine. And I don't think everyone has to find what you do to be beautiful. And I don't, but I also don't think that that should weigh on your right to do those things or your the social acceptance of what you do. It's just I, I just I am just so tired of having lived at least twenty five years of my of my life caring what others thought of me. Just, absolutely caring um like my worst memories are tied to the fact that I did things because I wanted other people to think that any anything positive about me and um I, I'm just over that <laughs> I'm so over it I can't convey how over it I truly am and so when I say F your beauty standards it's like I really don't care if you like this <laughs> I don't care if this is attractive, I don't care if this is what your ideal fat person wears, um, or, you know, in anything. I just, I'm so over trying to appeal to a broad sense of beauty. Um, I've always wanted to wear my makeup like this, and it's not necessarily what everyone wears. It's not low-key, it's not, you know, the barely there, you know what I mean? It's all those things that everyone says, don't do. And so I'm going to now do everything I was told not to do um, because someone feared that I would not be attractive or acceptable or any of those things. I was so told to not wear fun makeup. I remember a, a matte collection came out when I was in college and I really wanted these beautiful colors like the eyeshadows that were like half green half blue and I wanted them so badly and I had a friend at the time who was so anti-fun things that she was just like you'll never wear that. And I'm like yeah I will. She's like well I don't want to be seen with you when you wear it. So instead I bought um, melon pigment from MAC which is a great pigment but it wasn't limited edition and it had nothing to do with like really to do with that um, Disney Villains collection and so I've always been mad at myself most of all because I listened to someone who I grew to realize is not a good person <laughs> and um, I that just showed me that was kind of the beginning of the end of listening to people not the full end unfortunately that continued a few more years it was just when I realized like holy crap you wholly let someone else's opinion of what you would look like in that item dictate whether or not you got it, even though I had plans for it, I have I have definitely worn greens and blues since in wild ways, and it's just, I kick myself. I'm still trying to like, take that back, and so that is what I am doing here. I'm doing all of the things I have wanted to do, and wanted to wear, and wanted to say, um, that make me unattractive to the masses, 
and not in the hopes that you will necessarily join me in exactly what I'm doing, but that you will find that for yourself. That watching someone else do everything they want to do with their own body. Not necessarily to other people. I don't think you should just go out and be a jerk face and just say nasty crap people because that's what you feel. But I mean like everything you wanted to do, get all the piercings you wanted, the tattoos you wanted, wear the clothes you want, just everything that has ever felt like you and felt like the thing that would make you happy to do with your body and then everyone told you not to do. Like that's, that's what I'm here for. F your beauty standards is just the I don't care anymore <laughs> and that it, it is so freeing and it's one of those things where you're like never a hundred percent there because there's always times where you really think you don't care and then like just one side eye can throw you off from it and then hopefully you remember who the hell you are and that you look amazing and like that's what I mean when I say like you look amazing whatever you're doing with yourself that makes you truly happy that is when everyone is the most beautiful everyone is beautiful when they are themselves fully, unless you are a terrible person. <laughs> Hopefully none of you are terrible people. I mean, I can't control that. No one should ever bow to the beauty standards of one person. That's just, that's, that's really obscene. <laughs> it's not possible. We cannot all look like clones. Everyone has so many interesting like unique features so that would be a friggin shame if we all tried to carve our faces into someone else's shape we don't need copies or like different versions of other people that are already here we need you and your voice and your experiences and <sighs> yeah <laughs> do i sound like i want to be the world's grandma i feel like i sound like i want to be the world's grandmother and sometimes maybe i do <laughs> that's just where we're gonna explore things deeper this is like kind of the trailer, the uh, first day of class introduction where the professor gives you an overview of what they're trying to teach you over the course of the class. Yeah, we're gonna talk about all these things. We're gonna talk about the nasty trolls of the internet. We're gonna talk about the gross men of the internet. We're gonna talk about bullies. We're gonna talk about how imp inappropriate it is for random strangers to tell you what to do with your life, um, to please a random stranger. We're gonna just... We're not gonna sit back and, and be nice anymore. We're gonna get loud and in people's faces and unapologetic and it's gonna be amazing. And we're all gonna be happier for it. Um, so hopefully what I say interests you. And again, like the, these are conversation starters. I don't think my opinion and my stance on things are the final say on anything. That would be ridiculous. Um, and I don't think, unfortunately, that we will come to, like, a full answer at the end of this either. I think it's just good to be able to, like, talk loudly and angrily. Um, I definitely have that thing of, like, if you find someone's rage and frustrations with something to be um, off-putting or, un you know, unacceptable or socially unacceptable, um, maybe you're not paying attention. I'm just gonna be honest. There are a lot of things to get loud and angry about in this world and I think um, quietly hoping for change, that time has passed. Um, we're over that now. We're just gonna get loud and angry until people can't ignore us anymore. And I mean all of us. Like I said, all the other marginalized groups within our groups, we're just, we're gonna get loud for them, we're gonna get loud for ourselves, and hopefully make some change. Or drop our pins on the floor. That That's that's a change, I guess. <sighs> I'm excited to be more myself on here and not just the um, fashion, makeup, goofball side of myself because trust me, the goofball ain't going anywhere. Oh, well, trust me, I have I have plans for April that I, I promise you will definitely be a little more frivolous and fun because I don't think that we need to be serious and activists every second of every day. But um, I do think we just need to have some more honest conversations. We need to have hard conversations. We need to have messy conversations where we don't get the language right, but we're trying. I think we need to have all those conversations um, more often. Um, I think we need to stop trying to be plus size Barbies and telling other people how to be plus size Barbies and just, just start showing ourselves and hoping that that inspires someone else to be themselves. Sorry to repeat, but like that's just really... <laughs> really the point I'm trying to drive home. Um, it's really just the beauty in the diversity of the universe that that's really what I find so exciting about life. It's just everyone is so different and has 
so many perspectives and hopefully if we mash a bunch of it together we can understand what the heck we're all doing on this planet or at least hopefully make our experience on this planet a little bit more enjoyable. If anyone here is a drag race fan, we're gonna get a pop of optic. We're gonna take Armageddon. Oh, it smells so good. Hi guys, I'm sorry I had to change the look in like such a major way on you and come to you a different day, but um, I definitely like this look a lot more to go with, again, that glorification of obesity, promotion of obesity thing that I'm about to do with the Dr. Pepper. Make sure you find that photo on Instagram. I am, like I said, planning to do a few more of these ones where I just kind of like rant about a topic. They're typically going to be the less serious topics and the ones that are really important where there's like facts and numbers and things to really understand those will be kind of like more video essay style as best as I can do. Um, I like to branch into that a little bit and just kind of throw in clips and things. It's really important for me to explain the context of things and the backgrounds of things before we actually just dive into it like a subject on its face um, unless it's just something that's just a lot more personal, a little more story time-ish. So, oh. Oh. <laughs> um, I hope you guys have kind of liked this video. Um, again, if you really want a more detailed guide to this look, um, I will have all the colors I use down in the description box. Check out that other video for how I did the liner. So it's just a mix of like what you saw plus like a really painstaking graphic <laughs> liner um, in glitter. <sighs> As always, I will see you next time. Thank you all. Bye.